Greetings folks, welcome. There are a variety of tools that economic development practitioners and researchers can use to study the economy of regions. Location quotients are popular and so is shift share analysis. We talked about location quotients in several videos, so now let's shift gears and talk about shift share. Simply put, shift share is a method that examines the growth over time of industries and regions. So if we use shift share, along with say location quotients, it can give us really useful descriptive information about a region's economy. As we'll see in a moment, shift share gives us information about the sources of growth, but probably not always the causes of growth in a region's economy relative to the selected benchmark. The types of questions that shift share can answer might be, what contributed to the X percentage increase, where X is whatever the growth rate might have been, in employment sector Y, you could study really any sector in Penobscot County, Maine. And here I'm just using Penobscot County as an example. You can apply shift share to the study of any county, state, or region where you have the data. In a nutshell, the shift share method separates the growth or decline of an industry in a region into three components. The first component is the growth or decline attributed to changes in the overall economy. In other words, if the overall economy is growing, it's possible that a specific industry in a given place is growing too. You may have heard the expression, a rising tide lifts all boats, and that's the idea behind this component of regional industry growth. The second component is a growth or decline of an industry in a region that is attributed to changes in the industry in the broader benchmark economy. For example, if the sector that you're studying, let's say it happens to be healthcare, is growing nationally, then it's possible that the healthcare sector is growing in the region that you're studying. The third component in the shift share model is a growth or decline of an industry in a region that cannot be explained by the overall growth of the economy or the growth of the overall industry. This unexplained growth or decline must be attributed to something unique in the industry in the particular region. To get more precise, the shift share method calculates what's called the share component, a mixed component, and a competitive component. The share component, also known as the economic growth component, is the amount of growth or decline needed for the industry in a region to maintain its share of the benchmark economy, which is usually the national economy. To make this concrete, let's say that overall U.S. employment grew by 5% over a 12-month period. If that happened and you were studying the wholesale trade sector in Chattanooga, Tennessee, then the wholesale trade sector in Chattanooga, Tennessee would need to grow by 5% to maintain its share of the U.S. economy. The mixed component, also known as the proportional shift component, is the amount of growth or decline needed for the industry in a region to keep up with the industry in the benchmark economy, again, which is usually the national economy. To make this concrete, let's say that the U.S. wholesale trade sector grew by 8% and overall U.S. employment grew by 5%. This means that the U.S. wholesale trade sector had a 3 percentage point higher growth rate than the overall U.S. economy. If these things happened and you were studying the wholesale trade sector, and again, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, this is just for an example, then the wholesale trade sector in Chattanooga, Tennessee would need to grow by 5% to keep up with the overall U.S. economy, and then an additional 3 percentage points for a total of 8% growth to keep up with the U.S. wholesale trade sector. Now let's move to the competitive component, which is also known as the differential shift component. It's the amount of growth, or could be decline, that is unique to the industry in a particular location. In other words, it's growth or decline that is not explained by the overall growth of the economy and the growth of the industry in the benchmark economy. To make this concrete, Let's say that the U.S. wholesale trade sector grew by 8% and overall U.S. employment grew by 5%. Again, this means that the U.S. wholesale trade sector had a 3 percentage point higher growth rate than the overall U.S. economy. If these things happened and you were studying the Chattanooga, Tennessee region and it had a 10% growth rate in wholesale trade, then Chattanooga had a positive competitive component, 
because its 10% growth rate in wholesale trade exceeds the U.S. growth rate in wholesale trade of 8%. But if the wholesale trade sector in Chattanooga only grew by, let's say, 5%, then it would have a negative competitive component because a 5% growth rate in wholesale trade is less than the U.S. growth rate in wholesale trade of 8%. Here's an equation that shows the shift share model and how we can calculate the three components, with the notation at the bottom of the slide. The letters U.S. stands for employment in the benchmark economy. The letter E represents employment in the local economy, or the region of interest. The subscript I represents the industry that you're studying, and the superscript star means the end of the period that you're studying. If there's no superscript star, then it means the value is from the beginning of the period. Likewise, if there's no subscript I to indicate a specific industry, then it means it used data for the entire economy. The left-hand side of the equation shows a triangle, that stands for delta, and the letter E with the subscript I. Since the delta symbol represents change, and the EI stands for local employment in an industry, the whole left side of the equation represents the change in the local economy in the industry that you're studying. So if you're studying the restaurant industry in Austin, Texas, then the left-hand side is a change in employment in Austin's restaurant industry over time. The value could be positive if the industry grew, negative if the industry declined, or even equal to zero if restaurant employment in Austin did not change. So the idea of shift share is to take the change that happened in local employment in the industry that you're studying and break it into the three components that we talked about earlier. The share component, which is the amount of growth or decline needed for the industry in a region to maintain its share of the benchmark economy, is calculated by multiplying the local industry employment in the beginning of the period, that's the EI, by the growth rate of overall employment in the benchmark economy. That's U.S. star divided by U.S., and you subtract 1 from that. The mixed component, which is the amount of growth or decline needed for the industry in a region to keep up with the industry in the benchmark economy, is calculated by multiplying the local industry employment in the beginning of the period, again, that's the EI, by the growth of industry employment in the benchmark economy, that's U.S. I star divided by U.S. I, minus the growth of overall employment in the benchmark economy, that's U.S. star divided by U.S. The competitive component, which is the amount of growth or decline that is not explained by the overall growth of the economy and the growth of the industry in the benchmark economy, is calculated by multiplying the local industry employment at the beginning of the period, again, that's still EI, by the growth of industry employment in the local economy, that's EI star divided by EI, and you subtract from that the growth of industry employment in the benchmark economy. That's USI star divided by USI. We can compare the employment change of the local industry, again, that's the delta EI, to the different shift share components. For example, we can compare delta EI to the share component which is EI multiplied by the growth rate of overall employment in the benchmark economy, which is U.S. star divided by U.S., and you subtract 1 from that. If delta EI is equal to the share component, then growth in the local industry mirrors growth of the overall economy. If delta EI is greater than the share component, then growth in the local industry outpaced growth of the overall economy. Finally, if delta EI is less than the share component, then growth in the local industry did not keep pace with growth of the overall economy. As another example, we can compare delta EI to the share component plus the mixed component. Also, with some algebra, we can simplify the share plus mixed components into the local industry employment in the beginning of the period, that's EI, multiplied by the growth rate of industry employment in the benchmark economy. That's USI star divided by USI, and you subtract 1 from that. So if delta EI is equal to the share plus mixed components, then growth in the local industry mirrors growth of the industry in the benchmark economy. If delta EI is greater than the share plus mixed components, then growth in the local industry outpaced growth of the industry in the benchmark economy. 
When that happens, the competitive component is positive. In other words, there is growth that is unique to the industry in the region that you're studying. Now that we've covered the basics of calculating the shift share components, let's end with a brief discussion of the weaknesses and strengths of the shift share model. First off, the shift share components can be misinterpreted. In other words, there's no reason why the growth of an industry in a region should be similar to the growth of the industry in the benchmark region. And it's not always clear that regions are better off with positive competitive components in some sectors. Second, the shift share model is sensitive to the level of industry aggregation or industry detail used in the analysis. For example, the results of a shift share analysis of the overall manufacturing sector, so this is a highly aggregated industry, might differ from the results of analyzing less aggregated or more detailed sectors let's say sectors such as wood furniture manufacturing or chemical manufacturing. You might recall that we also talked about the sensitivity to the level of industry detail in our discussion of location quotients. Likewise, the shift share model is sensitive to the size of the economy. For example, whether you're studying towns, counties, metropolitan areas, or states relative to the benchmark economy. For example, the results of a shift share analysis of a small town might differ from the results of analyzing a larger county where the town is located. You might recall that we also talked about the sensitivity to the size of the economy in our discussion of location quotients. Another limitation of shift share analysis is that it provides information about what happened in the past. And actually, this type of descriptive analysis is one of its strengths but it's not clear that shift share can predict or forecast the future. In other words, shift share is not a crystal ball. A final limitation of shift share analysis is that, once again, as a descriptive model, it does not explain why sectors may have positive or negative competitive effects. It could be, and often is, a sign of an industry's productivity advantage or disadvantage in a region. But it could also be a sign that entrepreneurs and business leaders made bad decisions to expand employment in a particular industry. So after conducting a shift share analysis, it's useful to share the results with local officials to ground truth the findings. Because I like to end things on a positive note, we'll finish up with a discussion of the strengths of the shift share model. First, the model has very limited data requirements. All you need is industry employment data, or you could even use the number of establishments at two points in time for the region that you're studying and a benchmark region. This type of information is readily available for counties, metropolitan areas, states, and even zip codes. A second strength of the shift share is that even considering some of the weaknesses discussed earlier, it provides very useful descriptive information about a local economy. It can give us suggestions about the sectors with potential for growth, for example, those with positive competitive effects in the recent past, and or spot weaknesses in the local economy. For example, sectors with negative competitive components. Finally, shift share is a great complement to location quotients. In fact, you could use location quotients and shift share together to learn a great deal about a region's economy.